All right, so in today's video, we are gonna go ahead and take a look at the Arcade 1UP Asteroids cabinet, which in my opinion is the worst cabinet that they've released for one major reason, and it's that really annoying spinner. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and replace that and make this cabinet a thousand times better. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. All right guys, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, please consider going down below the video and subscribing as we are working our way towards 30,000 subscribers. Additionally, I do wanna mention that I have released official merch, and if you're interested in grabbing a t-shirt or a sweater or something like that, feel free to go down below the description and you can check out a bunch of the different designs I've made. And I've got some of those up on screen right now so you can take a peek, but this is a really good way to help support the channel as well as get something in return. So if you're interested, please consider picking something up. Now this video isn't going to be me bashing a specific Arcade 1UP cabinet. Now I am specifically talking about the Asteroids cabinet, which was part of the Arcade 1UP Wave 1 lineup. And to be honest, almost every single one of their Wave 1 cabinets has some sort of weird issue. For example, Street Fighter only had a single mono speaker, which doesn't make sense for that game. We also had things like Defender on the Rampage cabinet, which is almost completely unplayable. And even the Pac-Man cabinets volume settings were either off loud or deafening. But by far the worst thing that we had with Arcade 1UP on their Wave 1 lineup was the Asteroids cabinet, at least it was in my opinion. The big issue here is the quality of the spinner was brutal. Now don't get me wrong, you could turn that on and you could definitely play the flagship game Asteroids, but once you started getting into some of the other games like Tempest, it was really noticeable how poor quality the spinner actually was on that cabinet. Now I'll give credit where credit is due. The cabinets that have been coming out lately have been a home run one after another. They've been doing some great work, but that doesn't mean that we can't fix some of the flaws that came out with their original cabinets. Now keep in mind, obviously these are no longer in production and my hope going forward, if Arcade 1UP is listening, if you're planning to do a spinner cabinet, you're gonna definitely need to up your game on those because the one that you guys included more or less makes the games unplayable, at least in my opinion. Now to give you guys an idea of how bad the spinner is, I'm talking really bad. If you're looking at it and you're actually playing with it, it has major, major lag and input delay. It also doesn't free spin. It kind of clicks almost like it's got a bunch of notches in it. And to be completely honest, there are things in my house that aren't designed as spinners that rotate better than this. For example, the knob on my stove rotates better. Every single one of my door handles in my house rotates better. My Nintendo Switch controller, which isn't even a spinner, rotates better. And for crying out loud, even this decorative post topper rotated better than the Arcade 1UP spinner does. Now joking aside, but it is pretty bad and like I said, it does make those games unplayable. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rip that out and we're going to replace it with the Glenn's Retro Show spinner. And I do have to say this is highly, highly recommended. So what we're gonna need to do here is remove the screws on this control deck, we're gonna disassemble it, we're gonna replace it, and then we're gonna test this out. So we're gonna go ahead and move on over to my desk and I'm gonna show you guys really quickly how to get this installed. Now taking a look at the Glenn's Retro Show adjustable spinner, it's important to note that there is some knockoffs being sold. I highly, highly, highly recommend buying the original. I highly recommend you ignore those cheap Chinese knockoffs and you just purchase the real deal directly from Glenn. He's got them available on Amazon. And the reason for that is because you want to support him. This isn't his only product. If you guys are familiar with the community, you know he's put out a bunch of other products. He's got a trackball. He's got a Tron flight stick. He's also got a new Star Wars yoke on the way as well. So it's definitely something we should continue to support him with. Now getting this thing disassembled, there's going to be six screws holding the casing in on the back of the control deck. We obviously need to remove those and get that out of the way. And then what we need to do is disconnect our wiring harness. Really simple, you just pull it out of the encoder board. We're gonna need to remove the zip tie that's currently bundling all the cords together. And then there's a few screws that we need to remove in order to get the old spinner out. Now the old spinner is complete trash. I do have to say it is probably the worst spinner I've seen. And honestly, it's just a huge buzzkill. You don't wanna be trying to play Tempest with a spinner like this. 
So we're gonna go ahead and throw this in the trash where it belongs, and we're gonna grab Glenn's spinner. Now the spinner doesn't actually come with a ton of parts. All you essentially get is the spinner knob, you get the spinner body, you get wiring harnesses, and you get everything else you need to kind of mount it. But what we need to do is grab the spinner body, and we're gonna screw it in to the existing holes where we took our old spinner out. So there's two screw holes. We can go ahead and mount it that way. Now Glenn does recommend that you put an additional two screws in. I'm not gonna do that for this install. I actually think that the two screw holes that are there are sufficient, but if you wanna follow those instructions, just keep in mind you might have to drill a couple extra holes to put those screws in. And it's actually pretty cool because on the bottom of the spinner body, we actually have a few different dip switches that we can change the settings on. Now, out of the box, you're going to have a default of 16 pulses per rotation, which is more than sufficient for the games that are built into the cabinet. But if you do have a 6-in-1 or a 12-in-1 cabinet, you do have a few options bumping it up to 64 pulses, 512 pulses, or bumping it up to 1,024 pulses per rotation. Now, this isn't going to be a detailed install. It's just a quick overview. But... Essentially, once you're going to get that body mounted in place, all that's really left for you to do is connect in the wiring harness. It can only be connected in one way. It's pretty simple. And once you've got that wired up, it wouldn't be a bad idea to grab a new zip tie just to keep those wires nice and neat. Now, now that we've got the internals looking and connected the way that we want it to, now we're just going to go ahead and throw the rear housing back together, pop those six screws in, and then we can flip over the control deck so we can start installing the spinner knob and wrap this install up. Now, before we get that spinner knob installed, it's going to be important to note that if you are using the Plexi, there's going to be an additional washer that's included in the package. You're going to want to throw that in underneath of the spinner knob as a spacer to kind of give you a little bit more clearance to make sure that you don't run into any issues clear that plexi so in my case I do have plexi I'm going to install that and uh, the knobs actually pretty simple to put on it just kind of slides right into place and then you use an allen key to tighten it to make sure it fits and that's actually more or less it for the install it's a really simple install it only took me about five or ten minutes maximum so now that it's in there we're gonna go ahead and move back over to the arcade cabinet get it popped on I'm gonna show you guys just how much of a difference this actually makes Okay, so now we've got our control deck. We're gonna go ahead and reconnect the control ribbon to the bottom of it, and then we are going to re-screw this back down. Now, just keep in mind, guys, when you are screwing down on Plexi, please use a manual screwdriver. Do not use a drill. Do not use anything like that. Uh, it doesn't take very much pressure to crack the Plexi, and I'm sure some people have run into that problem already by over-tightening these screws. But now this is all assembled and everything is looking good. The spinner feels absolutely incredible. It's a night and day difference. And even just rotating it the way that you see on screen, you can just see how many rotations it does and how much more smooth and free flowing it is. You cannot do this with the stock spinner. Try to rotate that thing. It'll stop immediately as soon as you remove your hands from it. So this is a huge difference here. Now, obviously talk is cheap. So when we look at it here, sure, it looks wonderful, but let's actually see how this looks on the main menu as well as how well it works in specific games. So taking a peek at the main menu, I'm gonna go ahead and give the spinner knob a roll and you're gonna see just how many rotations it goes through on screen and how quickly it goes. And that is huge. I'm sure that any of you guys who have this original cabinet with the stock spinner, no, you just cannot get this kind of responsiveness with it. And even moving into some gameplay of Tempest, for example, it completely changes the feel of the game. Now, it's not 100% arcade original, but it feels really close and it actually runs really well. It makes the game so much better to play. So in terms of picking one of these things up, as I said, links are going to be in the description down below. I do want to mention if you are using a 12-in-1 unit, you're going to have to buy an additional module in order to get everything connected. But like I said, links will be in the description down below. Big shout out to Glenn's Retro Show for designing this. It's absolutely incredible. Now, I do want to mention I did buy this with my own money. It wasn't sent over to me by Glenn for review. I've had this sitting with me for almost a year now with the intention of installing it. I just didn't get around to it. So I finally did figured I would put out a video and uh, that's more or less it. But yeah, consider subscribing to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Let me know in the comment section below if you've already picked up one of these things. If you've maybe bought a different company spinner, let me know your thoughts about this and if it's something that you would pick up for yourself. But that's all I've got for you. Thank you so very much for watching and I'll talk to you guys again real soon.